What is going on everybody? It is me, your boy John, with Grand Exploration, and welcome to another episode of The Build. Now before we get into this video, smack that subscribe button if you haven't already, and go ahead and give it a like. It helps me out so much, and we're really trying to get this channel to grow. But thank you for your support until now. I really appreciate it. But today, Oxbeam. Yes, Oxbeam has sent us yet another gift. This is their eight gang switch panel with Bluetooth control. I'm super excited to put this on the Granite Grand. And uh, yeah, this is gonna be great. Right now I have some kind of generic Amazon switch panel and it did its job, but the big problem was that it just got completely fried. Um, for those of you that may know, I had a bad alternator or a regulator on my alternator a few weeks back and it sent like a surge of power through my system and that is the one thing it fried was my switch panel so we got to get that swapped out so i'm super excited to get this done let's get into this video and let's start off by taking a look at what is in the ox beam switch panel box let's do it big shout out to ox beam for sending this eight gang multifunction switch panel just in the nick of time this is what we got in the box all right looks like we got our stickers for our different accessories I'll be keeping this because I'll be adding a few more accessories later. All right, we have the control unit here. It looks like this thing is pretty, it's not heavy, but it's hefty. It looks like it's good quality. It's nice and covered. I like it a lot. It's kind of big for my engine bay, though. We'll see how it fits later. Looks like we have the breaker switch right here. This is, uh, in case anything catastrophic happens electronically, that thing will flip and it will cut off the power from the control unit. And here's our in-cabin eight gang switch panel. Um, awesome. This is like, I think it's metal. It's got some heft to it as well. Looks like they supply some bolts and washers for a few different mounting brackets. Oh, they actually supplied two different um, ad ADA fuses. That's pretty sick. All right. So that looks like the bracket for the in-cabin unit. I don't know if we'll be using that. I'd like to in the future though. That is our Adafuse wire. This is a kind of a protectant for the in-cabin unit. That's, I think that's for like if you're driving like a side-by-side -side or something that's open to the elements, you can just slip that over as a cover. All right, what we got under this box here. So this looks like the control unit brackets. We have two different options to use. Unfortunately, I've been studying my engine bay and it doesn't look like I have a place to really use these. I wish I could. Maybe in the future, if I look around and move some stuff around like my air compressor, that might work. That is the cord from our control box to our in-cabin unit. That'll go through the firewall. Here is our negative and positive running from the control unit to our power or battery terminals. And they gave us plenty of zip ties. Perfect. Let's do this. You see how with the old switch panel, I had no place to put my negatives. Uh, you can only put the positive into this and you find a place for the negative. Now you could get one of those, I think what they're called like bus bars or something, but I never did. I just ended up putting them all on my strut mounts, which it works, but it's ugly. Now we have a place for all the negatives in the same box with the Oxbeam 8 gang switch panel. See? You got negative and positive for each terminal. That's going to clean things up quite a bit. Well, Looks like it's starting to rain, but we'll try to hurry up. All right, so I got the old switch panel out and I got all my accessories separated by their negative and positive. Um, some of my accessories have multiple, multiple features, so it was kind of confusing to see where the wires went. Um, but we're gonna put new ends on these and uh, find a place to mount the new Oxbeam control. Let's do it. 
first is we're going to hook up our negative and positive just hook it up in here but not to the vehicle just yet and uh for now as far as placement i mean the engine bay on the wk2 is so limited and i mean i already have stuff stuffed in here like a compressor and uh i'd like to later maybe put this compressor over there with a six monkeys bracket on that strut mount and then move this uh switch panel control box right here but for now i think we're gonna double side tape this to the fuse box i already tested it and made sure it cleared if you it'll clear if you have it like this it's pretty darn close to that strut if you have it long ways so we're gonna do it like that and it should clear just fine it's not my favorite place i really would like to make this look real clean and neat so i still will be brainstorming some other ideas but for now it's going to go right here this control box is IP65 waterproof rated. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with that, I'm, I'm a little familiar with it just based off of seeing the waterproof rating on most accessories. Like if you were to look at a, a really good winch, like a worn winch or a Smitty built winch, they're going to be, you know, rated IP68. The six stands for the debris and dust that it can resist. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure. And the last number, the eight or whatever it is, is the amount of water resistance it could take. So when you look at something that's like an IP, IP68, that's one of the higher ends of it. And from what I'm told, it could be submerged. That object could be submerged into one meter of water for 30 minutes, I believe it is. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I, I believe that's what it is. So this switch panel, the eight gang ox beam switch panel is IP65. So it's water resistant, but it's not going to be fully waterproof. Uh, so I'm kind of wondering how that all works with, you know, these big open holes. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I haven't heard any bad reviews on it or heard of it getting fried up because of water. And I don't think I'm going to be submerging my whole engine bay in water. So I think we'll be just fine. All right, we got um, the control board wired up. So we got the negative cable that runs right here. Tells you negative, boom. And your positive. Now the positive cable comes with two. That is because, I should make that more clear. You come with two positive cables. One is longer, one is shorter. That is because splitting the two is your breaker switch. This is your shutoff switch from the battery. So we got it hooked up just like this. I have this kind of loose because I don't know which way we're going to need to bend them. All right. And next we have our little ACC cable. This is what's going to connect to our, our fuse piggyback or fuse tap that we're going to put into the fuse box later. We'll probably connect it to like a cigarette lighter, something that turns on when the, when the ignition turns on and turns off when the ignition turns off so you're not draining your battery. And that's gonna go right here on the two prong, two prong, two prong. Just like that. Next is going to be the cable that connects our actual in cabin unit which is the eight gang switch panel itself we'll install that after but this one is going to connect right there bam that's starting to get dark out here but we got the tripod light coming in clutch so now we can see everything all right let's continue now, what I was thinking about for mounting this box on the fuse box was like some adhesive Velcro. The way I can just rip it off if I need to. That seems like the better option. But I think I just ran out and I didn't realize it. But I do have this double-sided Gorilla Tape. I don't know how like permanent it's gonna be. It's gonna just leave itself on the fuse box if I wanna move it, but it's our only option. So we'll see how it works. 
we got the double-sided tape on the bottom of it now let's oh i guess we should clean this off first right <laughs> let's clean this off with some alcohol and then we'll uh, apply this box to the fuse box all right so we got the box mounted on top of the fuse box i have my wires laid out first thing i want to do i just want to get it out of the way because it's kind of the tricky part is the uh the cable that goes to our accessory selector that sounds good we need to put that down in the engine bay and through the firewall the little end of that it's coming through the firewall we're gonna pull that through all right there she is I have all the accessories hooked up so far. Got the light bar, pod lights, air compressor. And uh, yeah, I just tried to clean it up a little bit. I still haven't connected my positive or my negative to the panel. But next, we're gonna go ahead and hook up the fuse piggyback or the fuse tap. And it's gonna go right inside here. They actually supply two fuse piggybacks both different sizes depending on what your vehicle needs i don't need this one i need this micro one so that's what we're going to use so you're just going to connect this to this cord here so there's the fuse tap you still got a fuse for the cigarette lighter as well as the fuse you're using for this accessory and i found where that cigarette lighter port was so that plugs in there we'll close that up and just comes around here but the lid's going to go over all this should look pretty clean okay so we already have our cable coming through the firewall up there you can see it yeah, right through there i already pulled out the liner underneath the glove uh glove box I have the center console loose, just clips, and then your center piece comes up just like that. Don't be scared to give it a little tug. It's going to be all right. It'll come right apart. And we're going to fish her through. All right, so we have the wire hidden up here. Close that one. It's hidden through here. Brought it around. And now it's coming out right here and we'll close that up later once we get proper fitment we'll get this old one off and now we just got to put this rubber grommet back up into the firewall which is sometimes a task so i'll do that and i'll meet you back right here no wires visible we are a clean baby. So on the old one, I already had some double-sided Velcro or some adhesive Velcro. I think that's what I'm going to do now. I just took the old piece off of that one and put it on the new aux beam. Um, I th I'm thinking later I might do something up here. I just don't know yet. But right now this is the safe bet and it won't make any permanent damage until I figure it all out. So we're gonna put it right there for now. All right, there she goes. Sitting right there. I'm right-handed so that's real easy. I used to have it <laughs> over here and I couldn't hit it when I wanted to or be accurate with my finger. But with the right side, I'm good to go. And yeah. It's unfortunate though, I didn't look like I was able to use any of the brackets that Oxbeam supplied, which I want to, but I'm not willing to screw into anything right now because I'm just not quite sure of its permanent home. So I don't know, we'll see in the future, but let's get this thing powered on.
All right, so we got our little battery shutoff switch. Now, I was trying to figure out where to put this one too. I got this little divider piece back on. It's not looking half bad, still pretty clean. I think the best place for this guy is just tucked back under here, out of the way. So I'll stuff these wires down and she'll just sit right there changed my mind I am gonna place this right here actually like this um, it's gonna clear and to do that I'm actually gonna drill some more holes right into this guy and run these through here I think that'll look a lot more custom and clean so let's try it out All right, it's been a long evening. It wasn't a hard process, but I just didn't quite know where I wanted it all to fit. But I think I'm happy with that right now. I think that will work. All right, let's give her a shot. I already got the stickers designated for what accessories. I still have three left to fill out, so. Sky's the limit. Well, let's see if we got power. Oh yeah, we got power. Now, this system is super cool. It's Bluetooth capable and you can change the way <clears throat> your lights flash. Like you can turn a light bar that you have that doesn't have strobe, you can now turn it into strobe. You can adjust the rate in which it strobes and you can also do what's called momentary so if you just want to give it a quick flash you just push the button and it flashes it really fast and doesn't stay on permanently and then of course you can switch it back to normal mode which is you know consistent and you can push the button and your your accessory will come on and you can also change the colors of your backlight so right now i got it on kind of a bluish white there's a whole color spectrum you can pick from so Let's take a look in the app. All right, now to the coolest part about the Oxbeam 8 gang switch panel is the Bluetooth capabilities. There's a QR code on the box of the switch panel. You're just gonna download the app. It's called switch panel. And now you can do a whole bunch of cool stuff with this. So right here, we're on the color spectrum. You can change the backlighting of your switch panel. So like right now it's blue. We can go to, oh, that's kind of pink into red you can kind of mix colors a little bit see how that changes so you can do any kind of color you want and you can adjust the brightness of it and let's see if we go into mode you can change the settings on your lights so this is really cool for instance my light bar and my two pod lights up front they didn't come with a strobe feature but if you go into the app and you can see where it says pulse, you can select one of your accessories. So we'll do the light bar. And if I go to pulse, now I can change the uh, how fast it, it strobes or how slow. And we will go outside and I'll show you. Alright guys, that is the installation of the Oxbeam 8 gang switch panel with Bluetooth capabilities. Man, this thing is awesome. It is a huge upgrade from that old little generic Amazon one I had in there. But it did, it, it did its job for sure. But this one just feels so much better. Better materials, higher quality, and it feels good to have a, a better unit in the Jeep. So if you guys are interested in this 8 gang switch panel, the description will be in the link. 
and Oxbeam has put a discount code in there. So I will leave that all for you. And man, if you haven't hit subscribe, please hit subscribe. You're helping me reach at least 2,000 subscribers by Thanksgiving. That is the goal, and it is up to you guys. But I really appreciate your love and support. You guys mean the world to me. And uh, until next time, guys, love you. Peace.